Okay. Um, so this is the May 31st meeting, our second meeting of the Public Art Review Committee. And uh, I'm Chris Dwyer. Welcome to the meeting for people watching as well as people here. We'll, we'll start briefly with introductions just so that um, you all know who we are. Uh, Mara? And Laura Sling. Ellen Feinberg. Jen Meister. Alyssa Murphy. Beth Hartnett. Paul Burke. Nancy Pearson. And we're joined by our counselor, Kate Cook. Um, and we'll be hearing later from attorney Jane Perini. So the after just a little housekeeping, I think what we really want to focus on is prioritizing tasks for the committee um, and then spending, uh, we invited uh, Jane Farini here to begin this discussion about this board's relationship to the other land use boards, to public works, to, uh, I had a preliminary talk with Jane and the more we talked about it, the more complicated we realized it is because as a committee, we potentially have uh, the need to connect, advise, take over uh, the authority for public art in a variety of different realms. And each day that goes by, I realize there's yet another part of the city that has a public art review committee. I was reminded today, for example, that the library has a public art review committee. So do we have a relationship to that committee or whatever? So uh, Jane is here to lay out some kind of principles, groundwork, but largely I think for us to ask her questions and maybe to test out some ideas. So we, we're thinking of that as a preliminary conversation to you know work that we'll be doing and recommending from this committee to go forward to the council. Um, and then, while it's not on the agenda, we do want to allow a little time for public comment in case we have anybody listening on Zoom or anybody uh, comes to the to the meeting. Um, but we want to start with uh, a vote to accept the minutes from the May 10th meeting. And I think everyone received those. I made a few copies if you want to take a look quickly. Anybody need? No, I reviewed it okay. online. Thank you. Um, so a motion to approve those. So, um, Mara, second, second. Ellen, did anybody have corrections, changes? And then all in favor? Aye. 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 And then the second order of business, if you remember, after we voted to adjourn last time, uh, Nancy did uh, agree to put herself into nomination um, to be secretary. So I'd like somebody to formally do that. I would nominate Nancy Pearson to be the secretary of this committee. I'll second that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 With thanks from all of us, Nancy. Um, and just as a reminder, I think the notes that we had for our last meeting are probably about right in terms of uh, big picture. You know, no need to try to capture it like you would in a planning board, but just to do sort of major decisions. Um, and then the, uh, so the order of business of doing priorities, I think the suggestion last time was that we take that list that we had generated and any new ideas we want to add to it and do some priority setting. So uh, Kate has a PowerPoint slide that has that list on it. And while she's doing that, I'll thank her for being our tech person tonight. So um, what I was thinking we would do after a brief discussion of these and additions that we might want to add is each person vote for the three that they think are the things that we should start with. We can do that right on the slide and we'll just sort of see what bubbles to the job. So let's look at the next slide. This is what was in the minutes and what we generated last time as tasks that we should take on. And we'll just review them. Um, the first one, developing criteria or refining the criteria from the start that we have that are appropriate for different circumstances. 
and the examples were, you know, the criteria for a percent for art commission might be different than a list of criteria for public art in the historic district. There, obviously there's a core that's the same, but we might have some tweaks that are different. Um, the second, clarifying the relationship between this committee and, of, and the land use boards. What authority do we have? What procedures should we have? What changes are needed in ordinances and guidelines? A third was developing a plan to work with projects that are in the middle already that have public art in them. The Bohanko Park, and I added the rail trail again after talking to Jane because the rail trail is gonna be a fantastic place for, for public art. So sort of our, our role in that, our curatorial role in those projects. Uh, last time someone suggested we should do an inventory of potential upcoming percent for art opportunities include along with any past opportunities that haven't been realized so we know what's in our landscape um, and then I think Kate added the idea of identifying public spaces that could be sites for public art something we would put in the next master plan and then we had the idea of guidance for private developers interested in adding public art to their sites and then uh, based on a uh, uh, something Ellen brought up the other day, I think we should add um, identifying opportunities, funding opportunities for acquiring or commissioning public art. So can you type that in? When we're done, can you? When we're done. Okay, so let's make sure we've we've got that one. Um, and then before we think of priority setting, have people thought of other tasks that they think this committee should take on? Yeah, Alyssa, you look like. Well, I'm not sure that it's a task, but it's something that has come to mind that is a potential thing we should look at or just diversity of membership of this committee. So I think that's good um, because we don't have a, as far as I know, we don't have a succession plan. So actually framing out uh, the membership of the committee and what it should be going forward. I think that's good. And maybe, uh, succession plan i don't think that was built in was it Kate? no no um this the plan was for this committee to make recommendations okay to yeah. the mayor for appointments in the future all right so, so, so we need to and what what that, that process, process how many and when yeah. that happens and chris yeah. could you repeat what your first priority the first suggestion you made was yes uh, and that was to identify funding opportunities yeah, right, for identify. public art and ellen do you want to say just a couple words about what you identified i happen to be reviewing an email so my emails and there was some information about a federal uh, or a national level grant process that um, I, I'm not, I don't have my notes with me, but it, and Chris, so you fill yeah. in too, um, that uh, essentially suggests that it, that there would be funding that would need to be matched up to 15,000? No. Well, you can ask for from 25 to like 100 something, I think. 150. But you got to match like it. Yeah. yeah we would have to match it dollar for dollar. Um, and especially in remote, rural, um, unusual, um, you know, places that are not already, uh, and, and it's aimed at places with a certain population level. So we meet that criteria. But my suggestion was that we look at funding art, not in our downtown where we have a lot of art, but we look at things like public housing and what we can do there um, and other um, places where people congregate that um, are 
who do not necessarily ha have access to art in the way that those of us who live in certain other areas of the city do. Is that uh, that's good good description, and but but the generic part of that is a task of looking for such opportunities. Yeah, you know, whether this is the right one or others, but um, a, a task for us. So if we think of those six plus these two identifying opportunities and dealing with the committee process and membership, um, I thought we could just you know ponder for a few minutes and if everybody takes three votes, you could put all three votes on one. If you think it's really important, you could scatter them and we'll just see. Um, see where we end up and I don't know if you can type into that the numbers as we go I can, can I can I, can I ask yeah. one question okay. about the first one relationship to boards um the how, second one you mean uh, uh yes okay. well no the first one the first one says criteria yep. and the sec the first bullet under that or, or is relationship to boards oh those are all tasks it just happens that that's a dark oh, blue so okay thank you okay um, and then the relationship to boards, how many different boards are we talking about? The land use boards, are we talking, I assume we're talking about historic district commission, we're talking about planning board, planning board, zoning. Yeah. I'm sorry, all zoning regulations, yeah, right. setbacks and things like that, height restrictions, possibly. Right. signage yeah. so but the, the boards are probably the historic district commission, commission and, and planning board and jane did you think anything else um, no i i think that those are primarily okay. the ones that yes. are intersects with land use decisions yeah um, I, I, well i can be happy to kind of help you strategize and yeah. identify i think i think you're should I go to one mic? Yeah. <laughs> um. Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jane Farini. I'm the assistant city attorney here in Portsmouth. And thank you for having me speak on this. Um, so I think primarily uh, where um, we have seen um, art come before the land use boards are the HDC and also the planning board. Um, and I think a lot will depend, this is the beginning of your conversation of sort of what your priorities are and what you envision for this committee. Um, my review of the existing ordinance that you are governed by is seems to be not have a lot of teeth to it. It's, you know, advisory in evaluations and that sort of thing. So I think as you figure out your priorities, um, then you can formulate specifically targeted goals as to how you would like to interface with these specific land use committees. For example, the Chris and I were talking about an analogy of the conservation commission. So in the zoning ordinance, the planning director shall refer to the conservation commission when something's in the wetland buffer that is either going to be impeded or within a certain amount of feet. So that's a that's an ordinance that says shall. However, the the concom as we call it as report a recommendation is only advisory to the planning board. So that could be a structure, a similar type of structure whenever you folks have your priorities to um, kind of think about, you know, and th those kinds of things would require an ordinance change, which would have to go before the city council for three readings and have the support of the council who are the policy makers. And also, obviously, if you are talking about inter uh, a relationship or advisory or expanding your advisory role to land use boards certainly conversations with the chairs of those land use boards you know before these ordinances come forward an invitation to your committee would probably be advisable to kind of get the conversation started mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we think it's 
it's really those two right now, historic district and planning board. But then there are relationships to other, there's a relationship with public works. You know, then once you start to think about how these things actually get realized, um, there will be other kinds of relationships in addition to the land use group. They're really important because they sort of block or permit, you know, a start. And the reason it's not the Zoning Board of Adjustment is that the Zoning Board of Adjustment is independent of our other board. They're like the, la the last, <laughs> you know, even the yeah. council can't influence them. So we clearly are not going to influence <laughs> them. Um, uh, so, you know, as an independent body. Thank you. That's really that's that's good. Um, other questions or other additions? Because thank you for putting those two up there. Uh, obviously, this is you know nothing cut in stone, but and it doesn't mean that just because it's not a priority we won't work on it. But just to give ourselves some working plans. So. And I guess. I have one more question in about creating an inventory and the percent for art. Mm -hmm. Do we actually do we actually have funds for percent for art? Well, I think what that refers to is taking a look like at uh, Nancy. I think you brought that up of looking at the uh, uh, CIP instruction. Yeah, what's the police station, for example? When yeah. Any real uh, theoretically, any capital budget over two million dollars triggers. It's two million, right? Oh, I can't remember. It's so million. these are, and the difference is that these, uh, unlike other projects, these are city projects, and I think we should clarify that in the bullet that bullet point inventory percent for art that upcome upcoming opportunities for city. Um, project projects. It's a, there's a difference between that, right? And the private and the, developers, yeah, and the private developers. Well, except that the private developers don't have percent for art. Right. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we. Okay. But if you're reading this and you yeah. don't understand that that this is a, uh, attached to yeah. city projects, city funded projects, yeah. and it it doesn't have to be uh, new. It can also be a uh, renovation. So there are arguments to be made about a, a number of different uh, buildings. Just a point of clarification, is it the state that pays for the percent for art? The city pays for that. The state has its own percent for art program. So uh, when a new courthouse is built, when a jail is built, yeah. um, the, so the state has a separate. So there are two separate funds. Two separate. Okay. Two separate. And it's part of the construction cost for a project. So you know, a new police station is going to be a substantial amount of money, and so one percent of that is a substantial amount of money. Um, I just wanted to share that there are some projects that have that are currently in the works that have don't have a percent for art. Um, project yet associated with them. That's the High Hanover Garage renovations, which are ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, and my understanding is that there's there are also funds set aside for the wastewater treatment plant <laughs> near Island. Um, that, well, and, and that project has not been pursued yet. You know, you remind me. There's also the skate park, mm -hmm. and the skate park is coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a good reason for us to be. <laughs> Doing an inventory, right? And and thinking about the amounts, the timeline, uh, the advocacy that would be needed. Okay. So who's who's ready to tell their priorities? And Kate, I think, is ready to tally. I am. Yeah. I think I'm the first sure. Jen, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think the first one we have to do is the criteria. That just I think we have to do that. I think the relationship with um to boards is something that could really trip us up if we do not understand exactly where that goes. And 
I'm torn between, I think the projects kind of, I, I look at them kind of almost together with the inventory for art, because I think we have to prioritize um, what we have to deal with that's ongoing, because that's kind of a time critical. And what do we have to make sure that we're in head of when something's coming up, the skateboard park, because that's starting. Right. So I, I can't really distinguish between those two. I would call them both projects, both projects, but that would be mine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Who else? It's really helpful to hear your thinking. Well, I mean, in terms of what personally interests me yes. most, yes. of course, I mean, I shouldn't say of course, but <laughs> it's obvious to me anyway that, you know, I'm really interested in the, in weighing in on considering looking at the um, ongoing projects. I just, you know, it's fa it's fascinating. It's just fascinating. I and mean, certainly the Bohenko whole process seems fascinating. And, you know, it, the and, and the idea that one could input onto the percent for art, you know, and take projects that are, you know, merrily on their way, but no one's used this wonderful mm -hmm. resource. But I agree that, I do agree that if you don't, you know, if, if you don't have your ducks in a row, you really can't get very far with that. And so, you know, I think we really know what our, have to have a sense of what our criteria are. And I also do think we need to know so this is four things, <laughs> because I think we also really need to have, at if, if, if we don't spend a lot of time delving into what the, um, in, in, into what the commi other committees are doing, at least we need to know how to get that information when we start talking about what we're going to do, because it obviously wouldn't make very much sense to go too far and find out that you know, what we're talking about is not something that's really possible. Yeah. So, but we'll still only give you three, but, you know, but really looking at the <laughs> projects themselves it, it, is just yeah. really, you know, what I think is exciting. Yeah, the, there is an element of this that is about doing something exciting, right? Yeah, and, I, and getting, because some of the first things that we do is how people will know what the committee is all about. Um, I vote for criteria and relationship to boards. I think that's housework we have to have in place. And then my third vote is going to go to the inventory percent for art. Um, but I do think, I wish we could fit the project one under that as well, because it seems yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, I wonder well, if I mean, that could we, be one we, task. It's all yeah. ongoing. Some are not yet started. Some are old money that wasn't used. And then there's the things that are in the middle. So yeah. I well, like as, that as, could be one project. We can think about that as we, and we're also, you know, can do tasks in sub groups as well. Some of those. Do you want to continue? Well, yeah. So I would just reiterate that those four, that could be three. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one are you going to put your. <laughs> Um, why couldn't we roll those two together and yeah, remember, have a slightly is, different reframing of it? Remember, Mara, this is just an exercise you suggested. I think it gives us this, you know, we'll, we'll surface these things because I think we can do. Um... My third is <laughs> voting for combining three and four. But you can put it wherever you like. <laughs> Ellen or Paul, what do you think? Well, you know, I think the criteria one is is um, very important to establish that. And I think even even now there's so much new art that's out there. And if we can bring that to the table and, and take a look at that, that can be the exciting part. That's the candy on the table. Um, I, you know, the private developers, I think, is a key. And we, mm. if because, you know, what I look at is, You've got the Celtics play in, 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 in the garden. Well, it's a TD garden, right? So somebody rents that. And because it's prestigious to do that. And I, I think, you know, looking for the private developers, but also I, in the powers and duties to force, force the development and awareness in the community, I think to uh, somehow include the artists themselves. Like I know the town, we have public garden. People, now people can go, the space is there. 
and I think it's build it and they will come type of thing. In um, the last couple of months, I've been circulating with different groups, and um, there's a yearning for this. Mm -hmm. To the art association, some of the artists are saying, we don't have a spot to show. What can we do? I know the people at the Baha'i community have an art committee, mm -hmm. and they've just done something. We, they know that we can bring the community together. We can have solidarity in that. We, we're involved right now with my father-in-law at the Temple Israel doing another show. They have an art committee. Guess what they want to do? It's out there, baby. So, you know, build it and they will come. But so I think, and I think in the private developers, but looking at other ways to, to foster this development, uh, create the fertile ground so we can bring the artists in. They want to participate. This is the candy, you know, you know, we have the key to that. Don't underestimate you know, the power of the town to be able to open up these opportunities, like with the garden and, and other things. And so, um, and I think, um, you know, certainly the relationships to the boards is also important. And then I think that way, you know, we're not only tying this committee, but we're tying other committees into, um, and this gets back to the comp plan. Ultimately, if this, if this board can communicate with those committees now, when it comes time to participate in the comp plan, we'll have that dialogue already established and mm -hmm. uh, it will possibly help move that forward. Good. And are those other committees open to us engaging with them? Is that a- There's some signals that they are. Okay, uh, Kate, yes. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it'll, it'll be a process. Yeah. Um, yeah. But- Just wondering what the relationships- were. But I think there, there has been a, frustration on the committees that they are okay they don't have the expertise they're yep. not the right ones to to do it yeah i i can share that you know when i was drafting this part of the conversations i had um in the legal department was that the planning department had struggled with the hdc specifically looking for someone to provide them guidance yeah. you know when they were dealing with things like like public art and so that they would kind of welcome okay. some support around that the, uh, you know, the relationship to the committees too, one thing I'd just like to bring to the attention, the planning board has the small ones. You can get a large one for $10, get a large one, start looking at it. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. All the districts are here, all the public spaces are here. It's all here, baby. And so not only that, it's a beautiful chart it's big and you can <laughs> you put your coffee it, cup it on it every once in a while and you right that could be a potential spot for it. <laughs> so nancy or ellen do you have are you thinking differently i'm not thinking hmm? differently well i agree with oh, Alyssa. wait 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 Which, let's wait sorry. that's so nancy i agree with Alyssa, and i'm going to have one of my choices be both the private and public projects I do think we need to set our criteria and I agree that um, the relationships are important and I specifically want to mention the one project that the mural, the Ruth Blay mural had to go before the, um, the zoning board for a variance because it came under signage so that's another you know not it's not just planning board it's not just HDC it's also that board and they were this was two two summers ago and they were not really happy to be talking about the merits of art <laughs> in their meeting. <laughs> they did a great job. It was um, David, the previous chair. They did a really did good man. job as as best they could. Yeah. And uh, but yeah. I think they struggled with the music hall marquee too when it came before the zoning. You know, and they were like, yeah. oh, well, you know, we, you know, same kind of thing, right? Yeah. Right. Good. Well, so. Um, I, the criteria and the relationship to boards. Um, but then the next one, two, three, four are really about, you know, how do we move forward? Do what what do we have in process? What, you know, what do we want to take as the next step? And so I see those could, I mean, I know I have to just give one mm -hmm. vote here, but I just see that that we the, they're all about projects and sites and mm -hmm. how do we do it and who do we do it with and mm -hmm. so maybe we come up with a way to 
think because maybe we have to check off those things. We can't we can't really separate them as as different um, things that we can. If we're thinking about a project, that we have to think about what site it's at, and we have to think about who the developers are and the funding for it. And so, it, I think we're going to wind up seeing things as um, as projects or opportunities, and then figuring out who we're working with and how we're going to make it work. And so, um, I guess I would say. Um, <laughs> I, I guess projects or inventory. Mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> so. That's good. I like the way you kind of clump them because the first two are sort of foundational. Yeah. Everybody has said that. There's no doubt we've got to deal with that. And then the, the next set are things that we might be able to um, uh, almost work simultaneously their practical steps the last one i think we need to we need to do it but we need to work our we need to figure out a little bit more about what this is all about and uh, develop that and to me the funding opportunities are serendipitous you know they come up if they come up and they look like something we ought to tackle we they're just going to pop up here and there so I think it's a good list. Kate, do you have any observations? Um, I guess uh, my only observation is um, I, I agree. I think that you guys are identifying the right things definitely that need to be done from my perspective, from sitting on the city council. Um, all these issues will eventually have to be tackled. Yeah. So it's just a matter of, you know, what order do you want to take them in? And um, mm -hmm. I think that what's going to happen over time is you're going to find you have a lot of different projects going. Um, you're you're probably going to be working, some individuals on the committee are going to be working more on looking at sites for public art projects. Others are going to be looking at funding opportunities. I think you're going to find specializations in the committee around that. Um, but the whole committee is going to deal with um, percent for the art projects and bigger projects um, as a whole. So I think it's nice that everyone identified those as this, the secondary kind of priority to, to address because that's something that the whole committee will have to do. So we can talk at the, at the end of the meeting about what we want to do at the next meeting. But since we have Jane here to talk about the relationships with boards um i mean you sort of you started jane started and i can continue a little bit yeah um, why don't you like lay out some of the things sure, we so, should be thinking about. um well in the uh, zoning ordinance that addresses the hdc there already is in that ordinance the, the following provision um the commission may request advice from such professional educational cultural or other groups as may be deemed necessary for the determination of a reasonable decision. So I think that's where you start your conversation with the HDC. It's already in the ordinance that they may, you know, solicit this outside advice for particular issues. And um, I think that's the conversation starter, you know, um, and as Councillor uh, Cook mentioned, you know, sometimes these boards aren't comfortable making certain recommendations when they don't have the area of expertise. So I thought that was nice for you to know that that's already that language exists. Um, the the second um, issue, which uh, Nancy Pearson mentioned, is the issue of the definition of signs in the zoning ordinance. And I think, you know, conversations with maybe not even the the planning board yet, but the planning director about, you know, the zoning amendments and how other places may define signage and because it's um zoning ordinances are ever evolving. And I think there are some issues relative to murals and is it a sign? Is it is it art? And you know, where that where that intersects, I think is is interesting because um the current definition of a sign includes, and I'm just snipping out certain words, a sign that represents an idea, I'm sorry, a, a design that represents an idea. 
So that could be a mural, but, um, and I think it's been interpreted that way that, that there would have to be a review. So I think, I think it's, it would be good of this committee to think about maybe um, get some other examples of how other ordinances define um, define signage and um, perhaps con con you know talk to the planning director and then bring or the planning board because they obviously have to approve any zoning amendments but um, to again give that support um, when there are issues that come up in this gray area. And, and for people less familiar with the zoning areas, of course, that's important because you're only allowed to have, for example, so much space devoted to a sign. So if you already had like the name of your business, but someone wanted to put a piece of public art nearby, if that's considered a sign, it would violate that. Right. That. On their private property would technically not is it public art is it private it's on my wall here it's a mural it's a sign on my property uh if it's in the sidewalk it's public you know so that that's where it was interesting with the private developer you know how is this committee even going to know if those things are being proposed through um the various land use boards and that's something staff can help uh try to brainstorm and figure out if there are requests that include murals for instance um the folks at market square tuscan you know they had right. some murals and um that sort of thing so so how how not only how you interact with the land use boards but how do you know when you these know? things are mm -hmm. coming before those land use boards and that's something we can brainstorm and mm -hmm. what board did the tuscan murals go before i'm just trying to put it all together I was it zoning? What HTC was it HTC it, because it's in the historic district, so they would call you to question. Yeah, HTC. I think probably was HTC. Um, yeah, no, I'll pass on that for right now. Okay, but Ellen, do you know whether cities that have many, many murals in them? Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Nashville <laughs> yeah. or Flor places in Florida, and you know Austin, how did Texas. they? How did they deal with this signage versus art? Do right, you, and that's what we find out. Yeah, yeah, that would be. I mean, Jane, you said Jane, while I have you here, because this this got it's my understanding is right in somewhere in the last term, the fall of our last term is when there was a Supreme Court decision about hate speech that triggered an amendment to a whole bunch of our yes. content yes. yeah you can't so regulate is there content. a way for us to just to just isolate the signage part of that or the mural or and just oh, revert it back to the way it was so that the so that murals don't fall under signage well or is it bigger than that it's now? bigger it's than bigger that than okay and the okay. ordinance is is uh, more clunky than that. Okay. So we'd have to look at it holistically, I think, and then have the conversation. But you're right. It's a uh, signs must be content neutral. You can't regulate content. One of the things I was thinking is that, so if we're taking a uh, bids or um, artwork on a particular project, we're going to say, well, this is the parcel. Uh, you're going to design something for this. We already can tell that artist the restrictions on that parcel by consulting with the appropriate board. Say, well, if we're near the water, it's going to be 250 feet back. So in their spec sheet for that design, we'll already give them the homework so they don't create something that we can't even install. So we can do that and I think get to the other side of that. One. I think this comes up almost more with private developers yeah. um, who, uh, right. who, you know, have a great idea that they want to do um and then the board because the hdc is um i don't know how to say this it, it it's so much more flexible in its interpretation it has much more flexible interpretation than like a planning board you know the planning board it's very straightforward mm -hmm. just by zoning so i think that's where these things run afoul but you're right in a commission we can pre preset all the you know preset the guidelines right. yep. so jane your comment of how will we know i thought was really interesting so how, what will trigger 
us because let's say we didn't even have authority right now, but we knew something was coming up. Well, as a committee, we could appear before the board and make a statement, advocate. We can do that as individuals, as a committee, even if we didn't yet have the authority. But we do need some way of making sure we we know. And, and um, you know, uh, we have a, you know, planning staff that obviously makes agendas, reviews applications, rev you know, and so it's, yeah. it's easy to, to, to flag if, but, but some of those are just buried in plans, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's not as obvious as one might think, like I'm building a four story building, it's obviously very obvious, but I'm going to put this on a wall or this type of design on my, you know, on on my external facing wall or my or my side wall so um it'll that it'll be interesting it's very doable but people just need to know like, yeah. you know and and to look for it is there is there a way and i know there's an on online permitting process is there a way to check off for them to check off is there public Good art idea. and then and then it gets flagged right in the application um we do have the viewpoint system and applications for for certain things are totally in, through that particular system. As far as our applications for um, for particular construction and development, I think it's more detailed than than that. But there could be some preliminary questions that could be added. You know, just Good basic idea. preliminary questions. It, it's sounding like a great next meeting would be to invite planning director to have a discussion with us like you're doing Jane so we ask some of these questions that we're teeing up now and um make suggestions like that and see you know get get this warmed up I think that could be really helpful so Paul. Chris are you, are you sort of saying that we the members of the committee would make would be helpful for a private developer run that through the HDC or something like that I know that is it can be a challenge in itself. Uh, sort of guide them. Somebody comes to the town says we have an art project. How do we do this? So well, go to the HDC. Well, hey, wait, we have an art committee. Yeah. Why don't you? Maybe there's somebody on the committee that you can talk to and right. guide you a little bit on that. And that would that's the kind of thing where the planning, if the planning department is really savvy to that, that's what they might say then. And I thought of an answer that. I, I didn't think of when I was asked the question, is there a way to know? We have for most major developments in the city, pre-TAC and TAC oh, you're meetings, right. the technical advisory committee. So before an application even goes before land use board, there are work sessions and pre-TAC and TAC to talk about how this development is going to come forward. So I think that's where you would be able to quick ask and identify if there are some art associated with that before it even gets. Yeah, um, that's good. Yeah, there would be a way to identify it at that level early on. From this conversation, it's like we need redundant ways where this will you know, something in the permitting process, something with pre-tech, ask the planning director, just so we have several ways of catching it. Agreed. I have another suggestion as well. When we do orientation for the land use boards, we can also share information about the public art review committee mm -hmm. and its existence. So, so they at least know whether or not they'll remember is an entirely different sure. thing. But after they've done it once, they will remember. Yeah. Yeah, I think um I I think you all have hit on some very interesting points because and, and I think uh Chris did too. It it touches so many you know, at first blush, it 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 seems narrow, but as you discuss this, you realize how many different city departments, uh, city staff uh, elements of of what goes on on a day to day basis, um, you know, um, is affected by by public art. And the other piece that's interesting for another one of your meetings is sort of uh, perhaps the public works director Peter Rice. You know, yes. how do we maintain this? What are the costs associated with the art that we do have? You know, how do we, um, you know, do how is that funded and and that can go towards 
you know, a future meeting to, to figure out how all of these pieces uh, fit together. Right. When I first started at City Hall, I had a joke with everyone. I, I used my 10% rule. They're like, what is your 10% rule? I said, well, every question that I'm asked, I only have 10% of the information because it usually <laughs> involves, you know, planning and inspection. And every question that we're, we get asked, or there's a history or it, we got sued six times over that, you know? Mm-hmm. So when you're new to something, you realize how interconnected things are in the city. So it's, it's a good point to remember yeah. that and, and how, you know, how we all, how, how all the departments and how various committees do interact and um, work with one another. Uh, the very first thing you mentioned was the HDC that may request advice from yes. Um the planning board has no similar thing. They have to to interpret our ordinances. Is that how you would? They well, I the only thing I can my analogy was the there's no shall, you know. So right. so for instance, there is a the planning the planning director, excuse me, the planning director shall refer an application that involves the wetlands to the the um concom so when you're looking at revising ordinances and your own ordinance uh that's something to think about how you know um and where do we put it you know and then planning director yeah. might might have a a better understanding of of you know what section of 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 the ordinance and what aspect of review includes that um I just don't have it off the top but, of that. But ideally, we would like to have an amendment that says the planning director shall refer matters of public art to the public art review committee. But that would be um, an ordinance change. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But there's nothing there. The, it, in there and now. the the shall, well, in conservation, they always do. Right. It's a shall and it's a recommendation. They don't have to follow that recommendation. Just like with TAC, the planning board doesn't have to follow, but they typically do, obviously, as well as the CONCOM. But um, the same, I would assume, would be for, for, for your recommendations. But that sort of structure, if you're, if you're trying to frame it as far as what you're looking to be able to how you are looking to interact with the boards. And, and that's going to take some, I think, some conversations. I don't think that's an overnight uh, thing, but I do think that, you know, planting those seeds and, and trying to figure out how, how you want to advise and in, in, in that and what structure that takes um, is important for this committee to consider before proposing any amendments. And you certainly want to, include the 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 board members that you know get their input as to how how that might best work so um let's go back to the hdc because the planning director shall refer seems to make sense since the hdc seems to have so much more discretion even though they already may request do you see it feasible that we might try to do something similar that the hdc shall refer if that's the goal of this committee, then then yes, that if that's the structure you're looking at, that you want these referral referrals to your committee, and it may not be with planning board, it may not be the planning director refers. Uh, maybe any application that has art, the planning director could refer it to you folks before it goes to the committees. You know, in the TAC process, um, that's. I don't know. Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to noodle that out and, yeah. and figure it out. But th- that that was sort of what I was thinking from what I understood the committee's goals were to, to try to parallel some of that other yeah. kind of committee recommendation. Yeah. I I I'd really think the conservation co- committee is a is a good um, is a really good analog because they'll see that yes, this is what they do all the time with the conservation, they have a separate meeting, they make a recommendation and almost always, I served on the planning board for four years and we did override the conservation commission a couple times, but it was to strengthen the protections rather than the other way we thought they were not, we thought they were kind of um, 
self-censoring almost and not being strong enough with their protections. So, I, but as far as I know, I can't think of another case when the planning board hasn't taken their recommendations. So um, that would be good analog. Other questions of Jane while we have her here. So I think starting this with the planning director sounds like a really good, mm -hmm. a good invitation so that we, we start in the right place. And you can get, yeah, good information from, you know, they have a, a great, a, a great amount of staff up there that, that, you know, vet these applications that are very uh, complex. So they can give you more information about about that and uh, same with DPW, you know, what are the nuts and bolts of this? You know, mm -hmm. what, what are the implications of putting this type of art here? You know, what are the maintenance? How do we plow around it? You know, <laughs> and do we sand? Um, mm -hmm. it, what materials is it made of? And, and they may, you know, provide some input on existing and what they've had to do with some existing public art and, you know, future suggestions that, that you might not think of just because it's mm -hmm. not in your, wheelhouse. Jane, do you know, or Kate, you may know where, where the uh, jurisdiction right now lies for the rail trail? I don't, I have not, I am not up to speed on where we are on the rail trail right. at this minute. Right. It's not, it's uh, with the state of New Hampshire, it's my understanding. It's not with us. Um, we do, um, the city has some capital projects mm -hmm. associated with it mm -hmm. for really access, but we're not responsible for the actual trail. I um, think Peter Britz was in the 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 staff person who is now the planning director. Uh, so he we can. So I think he that. has information about that. I, I yeah. apologize. I don't. Okay. I don't have. It. So we can add that when we ask him to come. We can add that to his. And I know um, Peter Rice at uh, Department of Public Works has information about that as well. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking about the access points that there were threats regarding those a couple months or a year ago and that those access points themselves are potential sites. Absolutely. We're getting, you know, if we didn't have jurisdiction over the trail itself, then we do have these mini sites. Yeah. Other questions? So this is very helpful. It seems like there are a couple of practical next steps. Once we talk to planning, it seems like we know what our zoning requests are likely to be and talking to staff. And then it sounds like you would say then potentially like meeting maybe with the chairs yes. of the two boards. Yep. In that order. Yep. Staff to get your information and then your chairs to start the conversation and then whatever your, your actual amendments might look yeah. like. Um, thoughts on whether we should try to do HDC and planning board together so that we're trying to say we're doing parallel processes needs? Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I would I would also bring in um, the ZBA as well. I mean, if they if the chairs just so they have the knowledge of it. So they're yeah. all hearing the same thing. Yeah. But well, if there's no other questions for Jane, we can. Well, thank you all very much. Well, thank you, Jane. I, I wish you good luck. Hi, and Jane. you know how to reach me if you have questions. So, yeah, thanks. So, let's talk about the. Um, so, people agree that let's try to get the planning director for our next meeting, which is the end of June, June 28th. Um, and then I'm wondering about where we have some time here of circling back to that topic on criteria and how we want to tackle um, the criteria. Because I think, you know, we have, as we looked at last time, we have criteria for percent for art. We have similar but not exactly the same criteria that are in our public art review. I put I gave you some other criteria last time. I think what it calls for is sort of a 
a review of the criteria that we want to settle on that are core, and then maybe some variations for if it's a percent for art, we want to also do this. If it's um, a commission, we want to also do this. I don't even know if they're different, but I think we need to just sort of talk through it. Is that, Alyssa, you look like you're thinking about that. Well, I'm thinking, but <laughs> no, I, I guess I'm just wondering about generally how we plan to work going forward on all these topics, whether these are things that subcommittees will go away and work on and present back, or whether we are sort of plotting along at each group meeting, trying to work yeah. holistically. I think it's helpful if we do these two foundational things as a whole, mm -hmm. um, so that we get a sense of common understanding common what the boundaries are and all of that yep. but i think it would be great to be able if people are willing to then do um you know separate committees we do have to always be careful of with separate committees that we are doing those things in a public way accessible to people of course it would always come back to the whole group uh, anyway, and would be would be public. Um, but there's no reason why, for example, with the criteria, uh, if a if a small group of people wanted to volunteer to like take a first crack at looking at core criteria, knitting the different ones together, and bringing it to this back to our group, that we could then agree upon it as a group or amend it. I think that's a useful way of working. We're a big enough group we can do that. Does that sound like somebody, something some people would want to take on? I'd be happy to take a look at it and just because I think right now if we have to kind of put it together because right to do it as a big group is, is it's too hard. <laughs> it, it's way too confusing. People are going, they'll be flipping through papers and getting a little bit. Right. But I think if we just go, here's what we've talked about. I'd be happy to tackle part of it if someone would help me, uh, because I think I just need a little bit of help on, I uh -huh. need a lot of help on that right now, but I'd be happy to work with somebody and then present it as part of That'd be great. A follow up next meeting. Yeah. Because I think the big part of next meeting is all of our committee or all of the Planning. rest of the people. Yeah. But I'd be happy to do that at the end of the meeting. Yeah. That would be great. It's something that interests me, except I, a stumbling block that I'm finding when I'm thinking about, okay, so how would how would you start and where would, how would you go about it? Is in a way it seems, very abstract without thinking about something specific. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a real advantage to, to talk about criteria without actually making a particular evaluation because a particular evaluation of something is going to, you know, send you down rabbit holes and by ways that maybe you don't want to. So, I mean, I just wonder if, okay, so wanting something more concrete than, than, concepts without some sense of how they might get applied in the real world to real works, but also understanding very much that you don't want to be sitting here looking at a whole bunch of proposals and just thinking, oh, well, what are her criteria? I like that one. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, because then you, you're obviously not talking about right. the general picture. I mean, you're sure. So I don't know. I mean, if anyone has any thoughts about, I mean, I'm curious about thoughts of being able to talk about the general without, you know, I mean, aesthetics, well, just criteria are kind of. Well, I think it becomes that frame, you need a framework for it. Yeah. So I think we have, we have lots of different, inf we have you lots know, of different things. You really have like several frameworks Correct. and it's about kind of bringing it together. But I, I, I think the real world uh, testing of the framework is what you've said then that you know you say police station percent for art how how would these criteria apply or you say we have a commission for we can do something at a rail trail where we can uh, commission something at the entrance how do these criteria apply so you kind of 
play it both ways. Too. So you could kind of suggest a test case. Test cases. We might actually test things that exist, things we know in the community that already exist, that right. we love for whatever reason. And yeah. how do they or that you don't like. Here? Or that we don't that like. That <laughs> yeah. But I also think that, I also think that it, we have to look organically too, because this is an organic thing. Right. We don't know what kind of technology, what kind of things are going to come in the next two years, five years, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it may be something that we're not even aware of, but it's just as long as we have a framework and can that kind of work into that so that we set something, but it doesn't mean that it's set in stone for the next 20 years. That's right. That's right. But that we have something that can be applied. Cool. Beth? And I know it's sort of which comes first, the chicken or the egg, but thinking about engaging with the different um, directors, do we need those in place before we meet with them to be able to sort of pitch, you know, what we're going to be doing or just talking about how I think it's building it it's a really good point that with the planning director no because of what we talked about but I would bet when the HDC and the planning board chairs come we would want to say here's this is the, what we here, offer yeah, here's is what, we're... what we offer here's the kind of thing we would be looking at because <laughs> otherwise why would they give to us you know the authority if uh, they think we don't have anything, any good ideas. Right. The, um, how, when we go to an artist, let's say we have several sites that could accept uh, these uh, public art projects. Are we going to try to get, as you would do, uh, set a theme or set a criteria that has to be kind of met for, here's a location, it's in a park, it's near the water. We need something that relates to the, historical quality of Portsmouth on the water? Is it a title thing? Is it this or that? So when we when we have a parcel, how, how does the committee uh, offer that to the artist with an intention? We need, we'd like to try to accomplish this. Yeah, Nancy. How can you bring your creativity in? Do you want to talk about that from the foundry perspective? So that's exactly the process that I showed you last meeting over the PowerPoint. What we did was we yes. gathered historical information. We did community education. We did community input. We aggregated everything together. We worked with the city's legal department, Jane Farini, to write it all up in a way that fit our existing ordinances so we wouldn't bump up against something that couldn't be created and we put it all into the call for artists for them to work from so that's that's how that worked yeah and I and I think uh something much less more casual uh, that might not be the right word but they for the Bohenko Park they said they wanted a maritime theme yeah you know um I think yours gave them a lot more like background and they left some of the background for the artists themselves to kind of figure out but yeah. if in a commission i think generally there's some direction like that you know so already we would kind of know the parameters we, we wouldn't try to put the horse into a barn a dog house you know we're going to say here here it is we know create the parameters and and hopefully you can submit a, a project that is going to work so um, right but you could be much more prescriptive in a commission i think yes than you could be in like the criteria that we would use if the planning board offered us the opportunity to weigh in on somebody's mural there were there it's the gen generic in the way you're talking about it an abstract higher level yeah so, so those are at least two different. And there are probably more vari variations on that that you'll think about if you start that. So, I don't know if I heard uh, someone yet as a partner for you, Jen. I do, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? I'll check. We don't have anybody on Zoom, do we? No one on Zoom. Um, so that seems like a, a good chunk. I The other thing I wanted to make sure we did was to uh, look at the next meetings because we only have June 28th um, on the books. The 
July 26th and August 30th would be the uh, fourth um, Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. And understanding it's summer and people won't be able to make all meetings, but know that we can also come in remotely. Mm -hmm. are, are those reasonable days for people? Well, we can get June 26th. It's July 26th, July 26th. and sorry. August 30th would be, I think, the... Mm -hmm. Those are good. Yeah, so far okay. so good. July so oh wait, 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 wait. July 30th. I mean August 30th. Yeah, that's okay. It's like the Wednesday before Labor Day. The Wednesday before Labor Day, yeah. And then actually, why don't we why don't we go ahead and do the September one? Yeah. Which is September 27th. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you can you say the August one again? Uh, August 30th. That's the day after my dissertation defense. <laughs> Shall we bring champagne? I, I was going to say, we might I don't it. know if I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know. No, it'll be great. It'll be great. Yes, bring champagne. <laughs> um, That's great, Nancy. September 27th, is that what you said, Chris? Right, so yes. we're July 26th. The July 26th, August, August 30th, 30th, September 27th. September 27th. The other thing, uh, Ellen, what you had asked about, uh, we should get some zoning examples around murals and um, from other communities. From other communities. Yeah. yeah. Is that, Alyssa, is that something that you'd be interested I, in? I know of one, but yes. I, I I'm wondering more. about someplace like St. Petersburg, you know, or, or um, Look at Miami. Or you know, Keen some... has Keen has a great. Oh, I mean, Keen, Keen has a great, great girl. Keen. 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 Keen, New Hampshire. New oh, Hampshire. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that would be. Yes. That's good. Actually, Nashua has incredible public Nashua art. Nashua does in too. State. Yeah. Keen, Nashua, but it might be interesting to look at. Yeah. A couple of non. No, I know, New but Hampshire. New Hampshire is weird, and we might want to. <laughs> <laughs> be be aware of what we can and can't do. Yeah. Oh no, no. I I understand yeah. that, but it would be interesting just to see some other. Oh yeah. I mean, Florida's well. a weirdo state, but they have great art. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a recommendation for which community in Florida would be? I mean, really, throw a rock. It's going to have public art. Really, St. Petersburg, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. And, and for big cities, Philadelphia was just a real pioneer mm -hmm. in a lot of public right. art. So maybe Philly and then one southern city just to Austin, see if there's... Austin, Texas. Austin, Austin has great public art. Yeah, so... A, a, uh, a lot of murals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Portland, Oregon is another. Mm -hmm. So it might be interesting just to see... If they have similar, and you know, not do a deep dive, but see if they have similar, um, like a, criteria, right. and whether whether and and whether there's actually city rules about what you can and can't do, yeah. and if it varies, or if they all basically have the same, <laughs> you know, they've been borrowing from each other, yeah. essentially. Yeah, exactly. So Ellen, you'll take that on <laughs> the whole thing. Well, or, or you'll explore. You'll explore some. I'll I'll explore some, and and uh... and the the funding opportunity that Ellen and I looked at. I I'd like to do a little more digging. It's not due right away, but um, I think Mara, you kind of mentioned the fun of it. I think it's really important that we as a committee sort of show the value or early on, not just kind of try to exert authority, but show the value of what we can bring to the city. So if we could do something where we were um, bringing in an opportunity, I think that would be, would be a good idea. Um, I'm gonna see if I can pull up that information about that fast enough that, um... 
I can talk about it, but um, if not, I could, do you want me to send it out to people or? Uh, let's see, I think. We should just keep it. Well, I think it, I, we need to follow the rules here. Yes, um, yeah, I think it, it, the way it should work is always it should be Sean who's sending something to all of us. I'm sorry. And that, yes, but I meant, do, do we want everybody to have a chance to look at this opportunity or do we want to wait a little bit? Well, let's and, wait to see if we think it's a good opportunity before we just fill everybody's okay. mailboxes. Also, I think we, yeah, as we identified priorities, this was on the list and it wasn't one of the priorities. So yeah. we yeah. were yeah. excited about different yeah. things, but maybe we should go through yeah. our top things. We can, we can take a look at it and see I think if it's... We'll find a number of funding opportunities when we when we start turning over those rocks. So, And I just wanted to make an offer when we're ready to do that pitch of the value we're going to add. I'm happy to help build a couple slides to, Great. to do that. Yeah. To, drafts to present to them. Oh, that's good. So I'm just going to mention the opportunity so that people who care can look it up and that yeah. way I won't have to send it. Um, <laughs> it's a National Endowment for the Arts um, FY 2024 Our Town Guidelines and um, it's how projects can advance local economic, physical, or social outcomes. Uh, let's um, and it says, we want to honor a wide range of tradition shaped by the lived experiences of community residents, music, dance, design, crafts, fashion, and um, matching grants ranging from $25,000 to $150,000 grants with funding starting July 1st, 2024 for a one to two year project. The application is submitted in two parts. Part one deadline is August 3rd, 2024. So we have a really long time. <laughs> I think that's a mistake. Yeah. I think that's a mistake. How do you want three? Because it's after yes, the that's right. And I think and I think they um yes it says the presentation will cover summative feedback from the FY20 recycle review. Yeah I, I think they made a mistake there in this. Mara, you've got a question. Did no, you well, I was wondering if that site can be placed that you're reading from could be like placed in the minutes so that we could all look at it. Well, if sure. We to. Right. Let me mention one other thing. And, and again, I don't think this is like something we've got to do right now, but um, Valerie Rashawn uh, did contact me because the Portsmouth 400 does want to, they will be. Um, sunsetting, I guess is the right word in January. Mm -hmm. And so they do want to, uh, they see us as the successor to uh, address the Bohinko Gateway Park. And Kate and I talked to her a little about, um, they'll have funding that is left over um, from the work. So that'll be a Go into the. We do have a public art trust in the city, so that can go into the public art trust that might be able to see some of the things we've been talking about. So, um, at some point, they'll we'll, we'd have Valerie come and just talk to us about um, kind of where they are, what their thinking is. There's been a committee that's worked on that. Are there people on that committee who would like to be? Um, maybe part of a task force or something to help move some of that forward. Um, I just want to say that there is a um, webinar that the endowment will hold on June 15th at 2 p.m. that will go over the guidelines for the grant. So it might be that, um, we want to have make sure that a couple of us are listening to that, and it will cover um, a feedback from the 2023 grant review, and also talk about what makes for a successful application. Can you tell me what you're looking at so I can Google it and get the URL? Um, I think if you go to NEAR town, yeah. It came from um, 
the, it, it's a little, I, I can show you, uh, can I show you that um, I, from my, so where I can on just the forward, I could just forward this to you to, or is that okay? To forward? Um, that's fine. One-to-one -one is fine. Yes. As long as you don't create a chain, you know, you, yeah. Contact. I can just yeah, look at it. it. I can just look at it um, okay. after the meeting. I'll just look and see what yes. you're saying. I, I just, just want to put the URL on. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to add that um, whatever you do, if you attend the meeting on June 15th for guidelines or parameters, or if anyone from this committee does, make sure you include Sean in that because Sean would ultimately be responsible for um, shepherding a grant out of the city um, for this. Anything else? Good, then we can have a motion to adjourn. Motion that we adjourn the meeting. I second. And a second by Jen. Great, and we'll see you all next week at the end of June. Do we with, vote on that? With homework. On the table? <laughs> <laughs> with homework. Have to stay. <laughs> That's right, with your homework. Shh. With your homework.